Section one of Verse. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Newgate Novelist. Verse by Adelaide Crapsey. Birth Moment. Behold her running through the waves, eager to reach the land. The water laps her sun and wind are on her healthy brine drenched and young behold desire new-born desire on first fulfilment's radiant edge love at miraculous moment of emergence this is she who running hastens hastens to the land look look her brown gold hair and lucent eyes of youth her body rose and ivory in the sun look how she hastens running running to the land her hands are yearning and her feet are swift to reach and hold she knows not what yet knows that it is life need urges her self uncomprehended but most deep divined unwilled but all compelling drives her on life runs to life she who longs but hath not yet accepted or bestowed all virginal dear and bright runs runs to reach the land and she who runs shall be married to blue of summer skies at noon companion to green fields held bride of subtle fragrance and of all sweet sound beloved of the stars and wanton mistress to the veering winds o oh, breathless space between womb time just past dark hidden chaotic formative unpersonal and individual life of fresh created force not yet begun one moment more before desire shall meet desire and new creation start o oh, breathless space while she just risen from the waves runs runs to reach the land ah keenest personal moment when mouth unkissed turns eager slow and tremulous towards lover's mouth that tremulous and eager slow droops down to it but breathless space of breath or two lies in between before the mouth upturned and mouth down drooped shall meet and make the kiss look look she runs love fresh emerged desire new-born blown on by wind and shown on by the sun she rises from the waves and running hastens hastens to the land beloved and beloved and beloved even so right and beautiful and undenied is my desire even so longing swift i run to your receiving arms o oh, aphrodite o oh, aphrodite hear hear my rung cry flame upward poignant glad this is my time for me i too am young i too am all of love 1905 end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mother exultant by adelaide crapsey read for librivox.org by newgate novelist joy 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 the hills are glad the valleys re-echo with merriment in my heart is the sound of laughter and my feet dance to the time of it o oh, little sun carried light on my shoulder let us go laughing and dancing through the live days 
for this is the hour of the vintage when man gathereth for himself the fruits of the vineyard look little son look the grapes are translucent and ripe they are heavy and fragrant with juice they wait for the hands of the vintages for a long time the grapes were not and were in the womb of the earth then out of the heavens came the rain the sun sent down his warmth from the sky at the touch of life life stirred and the earth brought forth her fruits in due season i was a maid and alone when behold there came to me a vision my heart cried out within me and the voice was the voice of god yea a virgin i dreamed of love and i was troubled and sore afraid i wept and was glad for the word of my heart named me blessed my soul exalted the might of creation i was a maid and alone when behold my lover came to me my beloved held me in his arms joy 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 now is the vision fulfilled i have conceived i have carried in my womb i have brought forth the life of the world out of my joy and my pain out of the fullness of my living hath my son gained his life look little son look the grapes are ripe for the gathering the fresh deep earth is in them and clean water from the clouds and golden golden sun is in the heart of the grapes look little son look the earth your mother and the touch of life who is your father they have provided food for you that you also may live the vineyards are planted on the hillside they are the vineyards of my beloved he chose a favourable spot his hands prepared the soil for the planting he set out the young vines and cared for them till the time of their bearing now is his labour fulfilled who worked with god the fruit of the vineyard is ripe the vintagers laugh in the sun they sing while they gather the grapes for the vintage is a good one the wine vats are pressed down and running over joy 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 now is the wonder accomplished out of the heart of the living grape hath the hand of my beloved wrung the wine of the dream of life beloved my little son's father together we have given life and the vision of life shall we not rejoice who have made eternal the days of our living look little son look the grapes glow with rich juice the juice of the grape hath in it the substance of the earth and the air's breath it hath in it the soul of the vintage put forth your hand little son and take for yourself the life that your father and your mother have provided for you joy 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 the hills are glad the valleys re-echo with merriment in my heart is the sound of laughter and my feet dance to the time of it oh little son carried light on my shoulder let us go laughing and dancing through the live days for this is the hour of the vintage when man gathereth for himself the fruits of the vineyard 1905 end of poem this recording is in the public domain John Keats by Adelaide Crapsey 
Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Meet thou the event and terrible happening of thine end, for thou art come upon the remote, cold place of ultimate dissolution, and with dumb, wide look thou, impotent, dost feel impotence creeping on thy potent soul. Yea, now, caught in the aghast and voiceless pain of death, thyself doth watch thyself becoming naught. Peace, peace, for at the last is comfort. Lo, now thou hast no pain. Lo, now the weighted presence is within the room. The voice speaks final gentle. Child, ever thy careful nurse, I lift thee in my arms for greater ease, And while thy heart still beats, Place my cool fingers of oblivion on thine eyes, And close them for eternity. Thou shalt pass sleeping, Nor know when sleeping ceases. Yet still a little while thy breathing lasts, Gradual is faint and fainter. I must listen close. The end. Rest. And you others. All grave fellows in green place. Here grows memorial every spring's fresh grass. And here your marking monument was built for you long, long ago, when Caius Cestius died. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. November Night by Adelaide Cropsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Listen. With faint, dry sound, like steps of passing ghosts, The leaves, frost-crisped, break from the trees and fall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Release by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist With swift, great sweep of her magnificent arm My pain clanged back the doors That shut my soul from life End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Triad by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. These be three silent things. The falling snow. The hour before the dawn. The mouth of one just dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Snow by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Look up, from bleakening hills blows down the light, first breath of wintry wind. Look up, and scent the snow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anguish by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Keep thou thy tearless watch all night, but when blue dawn breathes on the silver moon, then weep, then weep. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Trapped by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Well, and if day on day follows, and weary year on year, and ever days and years, well, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Moon Shadows by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Still as on windless nights the moon cast shadows are, so still will be my heart when I am dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Susanna and the Elders by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Why do you thus devise evil against her? For that she is beautiful, delicate, therefore... End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Youth by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. But me they cannot touch, old age and death. The strange and ignominious end of old dead folk. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Guarded Wound by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist If it were lighter touch than petal of flower resting on grass Oh, still too heavy it were too heavy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The cold with steely clutch grips all the land. Alack, the little people in the hills will die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night Winds by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The old, old winds that blew when chaos was. What do they tell the clattered trees that I should weep? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Arbutus by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Not springs thou art, but hers, Most cool, most virginal, Winters, with thy faint breath, Thy snows rose-tinged. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Roma Eterna by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist The sun is warm today, O Romulus, And on thine old palatine the birds still sing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. He's Killed the May by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist 
he's killed the may and he's laid her by to bear the red rose company not thou white rose but thy ensanguined sister is the dear companion of my heart's shed blood end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Maze by Adelaide Crapsy, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I know not these my hands, and yet I think there was a woman like me, once had hands like these. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shadow by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. A sway on red rose, a golden butterfly, and on my heart a butterfly, night winged. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Madness by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Burdock, blue aconite, and thistle and thorn. Of these, singing, I wreathe my pretty wreath, O death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Warning by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Just now, out of the strange, still dusk, as strange, as still, a white moth flew. Why am I grown so cold? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Saying of Il Habul by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Guardian of the treasure of Solomon and keeper of the prophet's armour. My tent a vapour that the wind dispels and but as dust before the wind am i myself end of poem this recording is in the public domain fate defied by adelaide crapsey read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist as it were tissue of silver i'll wear O oh, fate, thy grey, and go mistily radiant, clad like the moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Laurel in the Berkshires by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Sea foam and coral, oh, how climb the great pasture rocks and dream me mermaid in the sun's gold flood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Niagara by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist seen on a night in november how frail above the bulk of crashing water hangs autumnal evanescent juan the moon end of poem this recording is in the public domain
the grand canyon by adelaide crapsey read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist by zeus shout word of this to the eldest dead titans gods heroes come who have once more a home end of poem this recording is in the public domain Now Barabbas was a robber by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. No guile, nay, but so strangely he moves among us. Not this man, but Barabbas, release to us Barabbas. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. For Lucas Cranach's Eve by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Oh me, was there a time when Paradise knew Eve In this sweet guise, so placid and so young? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Source by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Thou hast drawn laughter from a well of secret tears, and thence so elvish it rings, mocking and sweet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blue Hyacinths by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. In your curled petals, what ghosts of blue headlands and seas, what perfumed immortal breath, sighing of Greece. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Walter Savage Landor by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Ah, Walter, where you live I rue these days come all too late for me. What matter if her eyes are blue, whose rival is Persephone? Fiesole, 1909 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pledge by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. White doves of Cytherea, by your quest across the blue heaven's bluest, highest air, and by your certain homing to love's breast, still to be true and ever true, I swear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hypnos, God of Sleep, by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The shadowy boy of night crosses the dusking land. He sows his poppy seeds with steady, gentle hand. The shadowy boy of night, young husbandman of dreams, garners his gracious blooms by far and moonlit streams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Expenses by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Little my lacking fortunes show For this to eat and that to wear Yet laughing, soul and gaily go. An obble pays the Stygian fare. London, 1910 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
on seeing weather-beaten trees by adelaide crapsey read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist is it as plainly in our living shown by slant and twist which way the wind hath blown end of poem this recording is in the public domain Adventure by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Sun and wind and beat of sea, great lands stretching endlessly. Where be bonds to bind the free? All the world was made for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, Lady, Let the Sad Tears Fall by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist O oh, Lady, let the sad tears fall to speak thy pain Gently as through the silver dusk, the silver rain O oh, let thy bosom breathe its grief in such a soft sigh as hath the wind in gardens where pale roses die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dirge by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Never the nightingale. Oh, my dear. Never again the lark thou wilt hear. Though dusk and the morning still tap at thy window sill, Though ever love call and call, thou wilt not hear at all, my dear, my dear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sundial by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Every day, every day tell the hours by their shadows, by their shadows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Love by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist More dim than waning moon thy face More faint than is the falling wind thy voice Yet do thine eyes most strangely glow Thou ghost, thou ghost End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ah Me, Alas, by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. He, Ah Me, my love's heart, like some frail flower, apart, high, on the cliff's edge growing, touched by unhindered sun to sweeter showing, swung by each faint wind's faintest blowing, but so, on the cliff's edge growing, from man's reach aloof, apart. Ah me, my love's heart! She. Alack, alas, my lover, as one who would discover at world's end his path, nor knows at all what fairy way he hath, who turneth dreaming into faith and followeth that near path his own heart dareth to discover alack alas my lover end of poem this recording is in the public domain perfume of youth by adelaide crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist 
girl's song in babylon in nineveh and long ago and far away the lilies and the lotus blue that are my sweet of youth to-day from those high gardens of the gods that eyes of men may never see the amaranth and asphodel immortal odours shed on me in vial of my early years as in a crystal vial held what precious fragrance treasured up of age and agelessness distilled thine but to give give straightway all yea straight mine hands the ointment rare in great libation joyous pour o oh, look of youth o oh, golden hair End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rapunzel by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. All day, all day, I brush my golden strands of hair. All day, I wait and wait. Ah, who is there? Who calls? Who calls? The gold ladder of my long hair I loose and wait. And wait. Ah, who is there? She left at dawn. I am blind in the tangle of my long hair. Is it she? The witch? The witch? Ah, who is there? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vendor's Song by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist my songs to sell good sir i pray you buy here's one will win a lady's tears here's one will make her gay here's one will charm your true love true for ever and a day good sir i pray you buy oh no he will not buy my songs to sell sweet maid i pray you buy this one will teach you lilith's lore and this what helen knew and this will keep your gold hair gold and this your blue eyes blue sweet maid i pray you buy oh no she will not buy if i'd as much money as i could tell i never would cry my songs to sell i never would cry my songs to sell End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Avi by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Belle Elise Maton Louvre. Avi, the fair, at dawn, rose lightly from her bed, herself arrayed. Avi, the fair the maid in vestiment of lawn across the fields she sped five flowerets there she found in fragrant garland wound avi the fair at dawn five roses red go thou from thence of thy pity thou lovest not me End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Doomsday by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Peter stands by the gate, and Michael by the throne. Peter, I would pass the gate and come before the throne. Whose spirit prayed never at the gate in life nor at the throne. In death he may not pass the gate to come before the throne. Peter said from the gate, said Michael from the throne. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Grainfield by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Scarlet the poppies, blue the cornflowers, golden the wheat. Gold for the eternal, blue for Our Lady, red for the five wounds of her son. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Humming Song by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I make my shroud, but no one knows, so shimmering fine it is and fair, with stitches set in even rows. I make my shroud, but no one knows. In doorway where the lilac blows, humming a little wandering air, I make my shroud and no one knows, so shimmering fine it is and fair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Piero by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. For Aubrey Beardsley's picture, Piero is dying. Piero is dying. Tiptoe in, finger touched to lip, harlequin, columbine, and clown. Hush! How still he lies in his bed, white slipped hand and white sunken head. Oh, poor Piero! There's his dressing gown across the chair, slippers on the floor. Can he hear us who tiptoe in? Pillowed high he lies in his bed. Listen, Columbine, he is dead. Oh, poor Pierrot. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Monk in the Garden by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. He comes from Mass early in the morning. The sky's the very blue Madonna wears, the air's alive with gold. Mark you the way the birds sing and the dusted shimmer of dew on leaf and fruit? Perbaco, what a day! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Dead in the Graveyard Underneath My Window by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Written in a moment of exasperation How can you lie so still? All day I watch, and never a blade of all the green sod moves to show where restlessly you turn and toss, or fling a desperate arm, or draw up knees, stiffened and aching from their long disuse. I watch all night, and not one ghost comes forth to take its freedom of the midnight hour. Oh, have you no rebellion in your bones? The very worms must scorn you where you lie, a pallid, mouldering, acquiescent folk, meek habitants of unresented graves. Why are you there in your straight row, on row, where I must ever see you from my bed, that in your mere dumb presence iterate the text, so weary in my ears, lie still and rest, be patient and lie still and rest. I'll not be patient. I will not lie still. 
there is a brown road runs between the pines and further on the purple woodlands lie and still beyond blue mountains lift and loom and i would walk the road and i would be deep in the wooded shade and i would reach the windy mountain tops that touch the clouds my eyes may follow but my feet are held recumbent as you others must i too submit be mimic of your movelessness with pillow and counterpane for stone and sod and if the many sayings of the wise teach of submission i will not submit but with a spirit all unreconciled flash an unquenched defiance to the stars better it is to walk to run to dance better it is to laugh and leap and sing to know the open skies of dawn and night to move untrammelled down the flaming noon and i will clamour it through weary days keeping the edge of deprivation sharp nor with the pliant speaking of my lips of resignation sister to defeat i'll not be patient i will not lie still and in ironic quietude who is the despot of our days and lord of dust needs but scarce heeding wait to drop grim casual comment on rebellion's end yes yes wilful and petulant but now as dead and quiet as the others are and this each body and ghost of you hath heard that in your graves do therefore lie so still serenac lake new york 1914 end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mourner by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org, when you get novelist. I have no heart for noontide and the sun, But I will take me where more tender night shakes, Fold on fold, her dewy darkness down, And shelters me, that I may weep in peace, And feel no pitying eyes, and hear no voice attempt my grief in comfort's alien tongue. Where cypresses, more black than night is black, border straight paths, or where, on hillside slopes, the dim grey glimmer of the olive trees lies like a breath, a ghost, upon the dark there will i wander when the nightingale ceases and even the veiled stars withdraw their tremulous light there find myself at rest a silence and a shadow in the gloom but all the dead of all the world shall know the pacing of my sable sandaled feet and know my tear-drenched veil along the grass and think them less forsaken in their graves saying there's one remembers one still mourns for the forgotten dead are dead indeed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I have minded me of the noonday brightness and the crickets drowsy singing in the sunshine. I have minded me of the slim marsh grasses that the winds at twilight 
dying, scarcely ripple. And I cannot sleep. I have minded me of a lily pond, where the waters sway all the moonlit leaves and the curled, long stems. And I cannot sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rosemary of the Angels by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Little sister Rosemary, will thy feet as willing light run through paradise, I wonder, as they run the blue skies under, willing feet so airy light? Little sister Rosemary, Will thy voice as bird note clear lift and ripple over heaven as its mortal sound is given? Swift bird voice, so young and clear? How God will be glad of thee, little sister Rosemary! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Angelique by Adelaide Crapsy, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Have you seen Angelique what way she went? A white robe she wore, a flickering light near spent her pale hand bore. Have you seen Angelique? Will she know the place dead feet must find? the grave cloth on her face to make her blind? Have you seen Angelique? At night I hear her moan, and I shiver in my bed. She wanders all alone. She cannot find the dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chimes by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. 1. The rose new opening saith, and the dew of the morning saith, Fallen leaves and vanished dew, remember death. Ding dong bell, ding dong bell. 2. May moon thin and young in the sky, Ere you wax and wane, I shall die. So my faltering breath, So my tired heart saith, That foretell me death. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, bell. 3. Thy gold hair likes me well, and thy blue eyes, he saith. Who chooses where he will, and none may hinder, death. At head and feet for candles, roses burning red, The valley lilies tolling for the early dead. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Ding dong, ding dong, bell. Ding dong, bell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mad Song by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Grey jailers are my griefs that will not let me free. The bitterness of tears is warder unto me. I may not leap or run, I may nor laugh nor sing. 
thy cell is small they say be still thou captived thing but in the dusk of the night too sudden swift to see closing and ivory gates are refuge unto me my griefs my tears must watch and cold the watch they keep they whisper whisper there i hear them in my sleep they know that i must come and patient watch they keep whispering shivering there till i come back from sleep but in the dark of a night too dark for them to see the refuge of black gates will open unto me whisper up there in the dark shiver by bleak winds stung my dead lips laugh to hear how long you wait how long grey jailers are my griefs that will not let me free the bitterness of tears is warder unto me end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Birds That Fly No Longer by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Have ye forgot, sweet birds, how near the heavens lie? Drooping, sick, pinioned, oh, have ye forgot the sky? The air that once I knew whispered celestial things, I weep who hear no more upward and rushing wings. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Witch by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. When I was a girl by Nila's stream, I watched the desert stars arise. My lover, he who dreamed the Sphinx, learned all his dreaming from my eyes. I bore in Greece a burning name, and I have been in Italy, Madonna to a painter lad and mistress to a Medici. And have you heard, and I have heard, of puzzled men with decorous mien who judged, the wench knows far too much, and hanged her on the Salem green. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cry of the Nymph to Eros by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Hear thou my lamentation, Eros, Aphrodite's son. My heart is broken, and my days are done. Where the woods are dark, and the stream runs clear in the dark, Eros, I prayed to thy mother, and planted the seeds of her flowers, and smiled at the planting, and wept at the planting. O oh, violets, ye are dead, and your whiteness, your sweetness, availed not. Thy mother is cruel. Her flowers lie dead at the steps of her altar, Eros, Eros. With a shining like silver they cut through the blue of the sky, Eros. The dove's wings, the white doves I brought to thy mother in worship, and I said, she will laugh for joy of my doves. Oh, stillness of dead wings. She laughed not, nor looked. My doves are dead, are dead at the steps of her altar. Thy mother is cruel, Eros, Eros. Hear thou my lamentation, Eros, Aphrodite's son. My heart is broken, and my days are done. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cradle Song by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Madonna, Madonna, sat by the grey roadside, St. Joseph her beside, and our Lord at her breast. Oh, they were fain to rest, Mary and Joseph and Jesus, all by the grey roadside. She said, Madonna Mary, I am hungry, Joseph, and weary, all in the desert wide. Then bent a tall palm tree, its branches low to her knee. Behold, the palm tree said, my fruit that shall be your bread. So were they satisfied, Mary and Joseph and Jesus, all by the grey roadside. From Herod they were fled over the desert wide, Mary and Joseph and Jesus, in Egypt to abide. Mary and Joseph and Jesus, in Egypt to abide. The blessed Queen of Heaven, her own dear Son hath given, for my Son's sake. His sleep is safe and sweet and deep. Lily, Lily, so may you sleep alway, my baby, my dear son. Amen, amen, amen. My baby, my dear son. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To man who goes seeking immortality, bidding him look nearer home, by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org, by Newgate Novelist. Too far afield thy search, nay, turn, nay, turn. At thine own elbow potent memory stands, thy double and eternity is cupped in the pale hollow of those ghostly hands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lonely Death by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist in the cold I will rise, I will bathe in waters of ice. Myself will shiver and shrive myself, alone in the dawn, and anoint forehead and feet and hands. I will shutter the windows from light. I will place in their sockets the four tall candles and set them aflame in the grey of the dawn. And myself will lay myself straight in my bed and draw the sheet under my chin. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lo, All the Way by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Lo, all the way, look you, I said, the clouds will break, the sky grow clear, the road be easier for my travelling, the fields, so sodden and dead, will shimmer with new green and starry bloom, and there will be, there will be then, with all serene and fair, some little while for some light laughter in the sun, and lo, the journey's end. Grey road, grey fields, wind and a bitter rain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumn by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Fugitive, wistful, pausing at edge of her going, autumn the maiden turns, 
leans to the earth with ineffable gesture ah more than spring skies her skies shine tender and frailer bloom than plum bloom or almond lies on her hillsides her fields misted faint flushing ah lovelier is her refusal than yielding who pauses with grave backward smiling with light unforgettable touch of fingers withdrawn pauses lo vanishes fugitive wistful end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Elgin Marbles by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The clustered gods, the marching lads, the mighty-limbed, deep-bosomed three, the shimmering grey-gold London fog, I wish that Phidias could see. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Crucifixion by Adelaide Crapsey, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. And the centurion who stood by said, Truly, this was a son of God. Not long ago, but everywhere I go, there is a hill and a black windy sky. Portent of hill, sky, daisy clips I know. Hill, sky, the shuddering darkness these am i the dying at his right hand at his left i am the thief redeemed and the lost thief i am the careless folk i those bereft the well beloved the women bowed in grief the gathering presence that in terror cried in earth's shock in the temple's veil rent through i and a watcher, ignorant, curious-eyed, I the centurion who heard and knew. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fiddling Lad by Adelaide Crapsey Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist there'll be no roof to shelter you you'll have nowhere to lay your head and who will get your food for you stardust pays for no man's bread so jackie come give me your fiddle if ever you mean to thrive i'll have the skies to shelter me the green grass it shall be my bed and happen I'll find somewhere for me a sup of drink, a bit of bread. And I'll not give my fiddle to any man alive. And it's out he went across the wold, his fiddle tucked beneath his chin, and golden bow on silver strings, smiling, he fiddled the twilight in and fiddled in the frosty moon and all the stars of the milky way and fiddled low through the dark of dawn and laughed and fiddled in the day but oh he had no bit nor sup and oh the winds blew stark and cold and when he dropped on his grass-green bed it's long he slept on the open wold they digged his grave and there they said he's got more land than ever he had and well it will keep him held and housed the feckless bit of a fiddling lad and it's out he's stepped across the wold his fiddle tucked beneath his chin a wavering shape and the wavering light smiling he fiddles the twilight in and fiddles in the frosty moon and all the stars of the milky way 
and fiddles low through the dark of dawn and laughs and fiddles in the day he needeth not or bit or sup the winds of night he need not fear and bow of gold on silver strings it's all the people's turn to hear oh never it's all the people cry came such sweet sounds from mortal hand and listen they say it's some ghostly boy that goes a fiddling through the land hark you it's night comes slipping in the moon and the stars that tread the sky and there's the breath of the world that stops and now with a shout the sun comes by who heareth him he heedeth not but smiles content the fiddling lad he murmurs oh many's the happy day my fiddle and i together have had and could i give my fiddle to any man alive end of poem this recording is in the public domain the immortal residue by adelaide crapsey read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist wouldst thou find my ashes look in the pages of my book and as these thy hand doth turn no here is my funeral urn end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of verse by adelaide crapsey thank you for listening